your story needs to be told. Yeah. Everybody has a story and it needs to be told. And that has been probably one of my funnest projects. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Break It Down with Braden. I got Tina Valiant on with me today. Tina, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Tina is a realtor, an author, a business coach, um, and just an overall badass. Uh, <laughs> her and I got to meet uh, a couple weeks ago. One of our uh, sales uh, reps, uh, Hallie, introduced us actually, and they've been doing yeah. some workshop classes together and uh, just been getting some amazing feedback on the classes that they've been doing. And so uh tina and i actually just got to chat um over lunch actually one day and i was like you know what i need to have you on the podcast because you've got an amazing story so uh (laughs) tina tell everybody a little bit about yourself your background and kind of how you got here today well i've had my real estate license for over 20 years dating myself a little bit there started in timeshare sales i know everybody's like oh my gosh timeshare (laughs) right i wasn't one of those bullies yeah yeah (laughs) i did learn some amazing closing techniques i can imagine yeah and then um went on to build law offices for 10 years in foreclosure defense short sale negotiations and loan modifications in florida and that was an interesting ride but totally fulfilling because I got to help over a thousand families over that 10 years myself, not including my teams with getting out of their bad situation, which was totally an amazing experience to see them get back on their feet later in years, run into them and and hear how they were able to put all of that behind them. That was, that was great to be a part of that experience. And then, um, Went into working with investors, teaching people how to flip wholesale in Florida, and had a door knocking team in, geez, I think it was 28 counties, procured 26 listings in two and a half months nice. with that. <laughs> had the buyers as well, so that was pretty phenomenal. And then decided one day I was just going to pack up, sell everything I owned, ship my clothes here to Arizona to my parents, and got in the car and started driving. There you go. Just wanted a reset. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I got here and I got to tell you, it was funny because at first I was like, I don't want to do real estate. No, I'm done. I don't want to do it. So for like six, seven months, I I did other businesses here. I was like, well, let's try car sales. I was great at it, but why work that many hours? I think I saw something like that. Wasn't your brother doing car sales or something? Yes, yes. And I was like, why, why, why work this many hours? Meanwhile, I had my 26 listings closing because they were all short sales. And I kept getting these huge checks and I was like, what okay, fine. I'm 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 going to get back into real estate. It's fine. Yep. So I activated my license in Arizona in January of 2017, yep. my broker's license. Yep. And I got to be honest, I was scared. I was like, okay, I've never done general real estate. Yep. And my ex-husband was like very pushy and he's like, "No, you need to get out to open houses." And I'm like, "Okay, but what do I even say? I don't know." I don't know what to do. Yep. And I didn't want to go. Brand new to the market. It's probably a little uh, intimidating. Yeah. I didn't yep. I didn't know my way around Phoenix yet. I didn't know anything. So finally, I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to do an open house. Sold the first open house I was sitting at the open house to a cash buyer. And I had to sell something because we literally had no savings. And I knew, and notice he's an ex, I knew that as soon as I activated my license, he was going to quit his job and decide to tag along. Yep. He didn't have his real estate license in Arizona, but he was like, nope, I'm quitting my job as soon as it was activated. We had no savings. I had to make a paycheck. So thank God I sold the first open house I was sitting. Nice. And then I got them $25,000 in furniture at this house. And I went back to the office and everybody's like, what do you mean you sold the house you were sitting? That that We don't do that. That We don't hear that. How did you do it? Right. I'm like, I asked them if they wanted to make an offer. <laughs> it was a really simple concept to me, but apparently that's not a common concept among most. I hear all the time, oh, open houses don't work. Yep. They don't work. <clears throat> yeah, they do. All the time. They work. My, my whole team here is founded on doing open houses two to three a week. And they've procured over 6,000 listings in the last six plus years. And they're just killing it. And I offered to buy them leads during COVID. And they were like, why? Yep. Why would we buy leads? We don't want to do that. So I didn't. And they still survive. They still thrive. They still made it. So 
that's really the background of me. I, I, I never, ever thought I would be writing books. If you would have asked me five years ago, you know, are, are you going to be an author? I would have said, you're crazy. Yep. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, never thought I would be writing books. I have two published. I might publish my third piece. I'm trying to decide right now if I'm just going to turn it into training or publish it. But yeah, everybody since, wants since me to publish it. Since you brought it up, let's jump on uh, in. Okay. So See this, what I did there? This is my first one. <laughs> <laughs> first book. So there's a funny story behind this book. My mom and I were sitting at breakfast and she's. we were just eating and I had this vision all of a sudden that I was standing in this room full of women and that they were crying healing tears, and there was supposed to be a book with this seminar. And I looked at my mom, and I'm like, Mom, I'm supposed to write a book. I'm supposed to write a book, and I'm supposed to do these women's workshops, and I I don't know. And she looks at me, and she's like, okay. Sure. Because everybody says they're going to write a book, but nobody writes a book, right? Yep. One percent of the population actually publishes books. So... I went home and I was like, okay, God, if I'm supposed to do this, you're going to have to give me the words because I have no idea what I'm doing here. And the next morning I woke up and the entire outline was downloaded in my head. I was like, okay, so I guess we're writing a book. (laughs) All right. And it was kind of funny because I still, I still fought it. And this book is about women finding, regaining who they are. Women are in this, in this world where We grew up with this whole concept that the prince was going to ride in on a white horse and he was going to save you from your life and take you to his castle and you were going to raise his kids and take care of him and leave everything you knew. Right. Exactly. (laughs) But here's the thing that women don't realize. Men have been taught from a young age that they need to be the prince that rides in on the white horse and saves the princess and then provides this castle for her and takes care of her and the kids and it's just as much pressure on both sides but what women do is we nurture everybody around us and we forget about ourselves we forget what our hopes what our dreams were and we shove it aside and then what happens is this bitterness comes in over time like i gave up everything to take care of you and take care of the kids and all of these things and i have men coming to me all the time like I don't know where the women I married went. Like, what happened to her? I loved her because she had all of these hopes, these dreams. She was so positive. She was exciting. She was driven. I I loved that about her. And then the minute we got married, especially when we had kids, that woman disappeared. And I don't know where she went, and I miss her. And they're like, and I don't know why she's so mad at me. (laughs) (laughs) Why is she so mad at me all the time? And so a lot of this book is about regaining who you were and why you shove those things aside. Why did you give those things up? Nobody asked you to. And it's really about taking ownership of where you are in your life and realizing that you created this world yourself. Yeah, I think I saw something about that too. It's just kind of you you create the relationships and it's it's your fault that you're in the relationships that you're in kind of thing because yes. you, you're accepting those relationships. Yes, and, and you create them. I remember years ago I was like, why do I always attract men that expect me to do everything for them? And then I had to look at myself in the mirror and face the ugly truth and I'm like, oh, Okay, so basically what I did was I came in and started doing everything and created this dependency and created this world that now I'm upset about and I don't really get the right to be upset about it anymore because I created it. And if I want something different, I have to create a different world. Change your circumstances, right? Yeah. So it's hard for women to look at themselves in the mirror and face the ugly truth. It really is. Well, and as a as a father now with two kids and stuff, I could kind of see where you just kind of get stuck in the the minutia of things with the day to day life of taking care of the kids. And I see that sometimes with my wife, where I'm like, all right, I need to allow her to have some some time to herself. Like, go, <laughs> just go take a break. Like, go into the room, go watch TV by yourself. Like, I got this for the next few hours. Yeah. Do you need to go hang out with some girls? Right. Like, what do you need to do? And by the way, ladies, stop treating men like hairy females. 
And men are going to appreciate this. I read this amazing book called The Queen's Code by Alison Armstrong, and it was absolutely phenomenal. It changed my whole world. And I have a chapter in this book about relationships with men and for women to stop emasculating men. We're, it's ingrained in us to do that. And we don't even realize we're doing it. When I read this book, I actually cried for a couple of months about different things that I had done in the past, not meaning that was my heart at all. I didn't want to do that to the men in my life. But I realized over time that it has it was so innate in me because of my environment, my growing up, on TV, in movies. It's become so else. commonplace. But one of the things that I want to talk about with that is women, we can – I call us spaghetti brain, and and so did Alison Armstrong. <laughs> okay, we see everything. We we see the list of things to do, and everybody we need to take care of, and and everything we need to do for work, and it's all in our brain all the time. But that also leads into our conversations. So if you've ever noticed when you're talking to a man, we as women skip from topic to topic to topic. And then we come back and we tie it all up. And the men are looking at us like, I don't even know what you just said. What did you just say? <laughs> How did we just skip to five different topics? Yep. And men have what is more of like a waffle brain, singularly focused. It's innate. It's who we are. There's nothing wrong with it. Men wake up in the morning and they have five things innate in their brain at all times. And that is to provide, protect, help, save, and be the hero. Okay. They're focused on whatever it is they're focused on. So when they get up in the morning, no, they did not see the socks on the floor. Right. <laughs> they got up and they said, okay, I need to go provide for the family. So You're watching this, up. right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> they brush their teeth, they eat their breakfast, and they're leaving to go provide for their family. That's what they're focused on. Women take it personal. Like, did I'm not your maid. Did you not see the socks on the floor? Why didn't you pick up the socks on the floor? I saw the socks on the floor. How did you miss them? It's because that's not what they were thinking about. Thank you, Tina. Yes, you. it's true. <laughs> and also, ladies, it is not offensive when you are cooking dinner and a man comes in and they start snacking. It's innate in their brain that if they're hungry, it is life or death. They have to eat or they will die. What are you doing? You're going to ruin dinner. Yes, you're going to ruin dinner. So I have learned, okay, while I'm cooking dinner, I put out some snacks on the counter. It just makes everybody much happier. Maybe I'll put out some vegetables. Maybe I'll put out some nuts. Things that aren't going to necessarily ruin dinner. Yep. But also men have a bottomless stomach. They can just Thank eat you. and eat and eat. Yes, we can. Okay, so they're not going to ruin dinner, but we take it so personal. So this book is really about owning who you are, letting men be men in in their right yep. to be men, and to stop taking everything so personal and also to start taking ownership of yourself. Ladies, if you nag, they don't want to come home. They're going to find other things to do than to come home because they know you're going to nag. Yep. <laughs> stop being a woman who turns princes into frogs and start nourishing and and really nurturing that relationship with the prince that you have. Love it. Yeah. Number two. Number two. How do we get to this one? <laughs> so, okay, relationship real estate came about as I was finishing up the first book. And it all of a sudden, again, the the chapters were downloaded into my head, the whole outline, and it was all trainings that I had put together for my team. When I started my team, I wasn't really looking to build a real estate team. But people kept coming to me and asking me after, I guess, closing 42 homes my first year not knowing anybody. Yeah. They were like, I want to join your team. Dude, and I'm what like, the hell did you do? <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have a team. They're like, well, you need one. Yeah. We, need, we need to be on I'm your on team. your team now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I started a team, made every mistake in the book. But one of the things that I really took personal was they were struggling. They were not having the same success as me, even though they were going through the same steps as me with open houses and following up with people yep. and what was different. So I started really analyzing that. And I came to terms with the fact that most real estate agents do not have corporate level sales training. I had that training. But even people who have had corporate level sales training, they don't know how to take what they've learned as far as being a closer and translate it into real estate terminology. And I've come across that as well with many people. So I took all of that corporate level sales training, all of that experience with law offices for 10 years, and combined it all into the real estate language and how to work with your real estate clients and customers and how to be a closer, not just a tour guide. Yep. 
most agents really accept compliance instead of getting commitment. And so like you're at an open house and like they're that. yesing you to death. Yep. They're like, yes, 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 contact me. And then you contact them and they never answer their phone. They never text you back. They don't look at the searches that they asked you to set up for them because they were just yesing you to death, hoping you would let them go. Right. Trying to get you out of the hair. Right. Yep. It's because you're not being a closer. You're not getting true commitment. When you're at an open house or even if you're cold calling, what you're looking for is an absolute appointment. A commitment to when you are going Seven to speak time. or meet again. Yep. And then a confirmation that you are going to speak or meet again and when. So that both sides know what to expect. So I started writing the 16 steps for my team. I decided all huge corporate conglomerates have sales steps for their salespeople. So I created sales steps for the realtor. And it was easy for them to follow. So I started using it and teaching it with them, and they started killing it. <laughs> the, I, had, I had vendors calling me, title companies and lenders calling me going, okay, what are you feeding them? It's July in Arizona, and you have 22 closings on the books with your team of seven. Yeah, yeah. How is that happening? Because nobody else is doing business right now. It's because I took them from compliance to commitment through their 16 steps. And I started realizing that's something that's really, really missing. So I'll never forget, I had this agent on my team, Alan. People hear me talk about him often, and he was like my left hand. He was also a really big thorn in my side. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, Alan passed away um, about three years ago now, and it was devastating to me. It took me about a year to recover from that because I missed him so much. But he would say to me, you're doing what? You're going to start teaching this to other agents outside of the team? You're going to put together away a our book? Sauce, right? He's like, why are you giving away the secret sauce? Don't give it away. You're going to give us competition. You're creating competition for us. I said, it'll only make you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mad at me until he finally realized I was right and we needed this, yep. right? So this book came about for that reason. It was harder to write than the first book because I had to go back and rewrite all of the trainings into chapters. Right, in real estate language. That was tough. That was tough. But I did it, and this one became a bestseller. Yep. Yeah, it was really exciting. I was actually at a workshop, a two-day workshop, which I do them throughout the country, and I was at one when the day it launched, and everybody was like, right there like buying the book online to make sure that it hit bestseller because they were all waiting for their hard copy of the book anyway yep. and they're like okay if we go to the next one will will you sign it at the next <laughs> one because we don't have them in person and they kept trying to steal the proof that i had i had one book that was my proof and they kept trying to steal it i had to have a guard with the book at all times oh, that's awesome <laughs> it was so much fun it was so much fun that's so, incredible yeah um what kind of uh stemmed you to, to start writing these books in the first place i know you you had that situation with your mom where you're just like i need to write a book but like what why this one why the why the relationships in real estate one because i wanted people to have access i wanted real estate agents to have access even if i wasn't in their area yep and that's been a really big thing i mean i went up to northern virginia they sold me out of books at a convention up there that i spoke at and they have been passing those books to other people to the point where like on social media, somebody will post, I'm reading this book. It's amazing. It's changing my life. And then somebody else will post, okay, where do I get this book? It keeps popping up on my feed, Yep. you know, from different places. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's turned into really an epidemic of agents who need help, need to really thrive in this business. And it's becoming a highly recommended book for new agents, yeah. especially. It's got to be kind of humbling. It is. Yeah. I, I, I never expected it to happen like that. Yeah. I thought, I, I remember sitting with my coach and, and thinking, I even said to him, I'm like, okay, why do people care what I have to say? Why? And he was like, are you kidding me right now? I'm like, no, really. I, I'm just a person. I'm just an agent. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big deal. I... I don't look the part to be doing these workshops and being on stage and being a speaker and all of these things. And he's like, why do you say that? I'm yeah. like, because I'm not a Barbie doll. Yeah. 
You know, I, I don't look, I'm not like, like t- tiny, tiny size zero person. And I, I just don't look the part. I mean, I'm cute, but I'm not like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I want to go see her. And he was like, you're nuts right now. Like you need to get that out of your head and you need to push forward. Yep. And it's interesting because I'm doing, um, it, I'm doing an online group coaching session right now. It's called, it's time to write your book. Because people kept coming to me and saying, I want to write a book too. Yeah, yeah. What's the steps kind of walking through it? Yeah. And I've had to work through that same mindset with some of them. Even even the guys. They're like, why do people care what I have to say? Like, your story needs to be told. Yeah. Everybody has a story and it needs to be told. And that has been probably one of my funnest projects. How long did this one take you? This one took me... Once I actually sat down and like really started writing, I would say consecutively less than a month yeah. if I if I really added up all the time. And that was with publishing, <clears throat> with editing, with everything. Because here's what people don't realize. When you actually sit down and you decide and you outline your topic of what you want to write about and then you just start writing, it just flows. Yeah. It just comes as long as you don't stop yourself and get overcritical of yourself. You can always go back and change things later and you don't have to write them in order. I didn't write either book in order. Yep. You don't have to start from beginning to end. You can just pick kind a chapter and start writing. Yep. And that's what people don't realize. So, and I'm and I'm happy to report they're they're in their third week with this group and they are all writing. And they're like, "You're right. You just start writing and it starts flowing and it's coming and I can't believe it." And a lot of them have been trying to write a book for years. Are they all kind of in the real estate industry or just kind of all over? Funny. A lot of them are in the real estate industry. A couple. um, One is a lender. One is not in real estate whatsoever. And I have a gold medalist in this group who who is supposed to be writing. However, he hasn't sent me any of his homework yet. (laughs) (laughs) Overachiever, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, but he's not. But he's not. Like, he's teaching kids now how to be athletes. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why he hasn't actually participated. I'm gonna have to call him and call him out on it. So you have your own coach. I have had my own coach. Um, I had Gary Varnell for at least four years. We still meet usually once a quarter just to check in with each other. Yep. Um, I think my funnest experience with Gary was when we actually got to share a forum as speakers. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was what about. It? A year and a half ago and he's like tina we're we're going on the same on the same forum i'm gonna speak and then you're gonna speak and uh, i'm like get out of here yeah, how pretty cool, cool is that uh, that's really cool because he speaks that he's actually done things even out of the country so and and it's funny because when he became my coach it was just for real estate and then it became for the team and then it became for publishing books and speaking and it just kind of evolved over time and i would be like i'm supposed to do this and he's like okay let's dive in you know Yep. And he never he never stopped me. Like he just kept he was my accountability coach really. I would set deadlines for myself and he would check in with me every week to see where I was with what the deadlines I put on myself. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a, a number three idea? I do. It it's almost works? done. Is it almost done? It's almost done. Can you divulge what the, what it's going to be called? Yes. And I've had some people like, that's not going to happen. Mm, <laughs> here it comes. So it's called Maneuvering in a Distressed Market. It. I have nine of the chapters done. I have two left to write. They're very technical chapters. And I don't know why I've been holding off. I think I've, I've had the nine chapters done for a while. I think it's because I want to release it exactly at the right time. Now, interestingly enough, I've had people all over the country tell me that's not going to happen. We're not going into a distressed market. And yet, uh, my boyfriend's a broker in Orlando, and one of his agents actually has her first almost short sale right now. It is a distressed property, 120 days late, and if they don't get the offer that they need, it will go into short sale status. So it... It is starting to happen. Yep. I'm sorry to tell you guys it's starting to happen. But don't worry. I have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So do we have a projected date, are we thinking? No. No pressure. No pressure. No. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to decide. Am I going to turn it into another group coaching session? I do have one coaching client right now in Florida who is implementing the marketing that I teach in that I let I let him read the nine chapters. He is an agent slash investor. And since he's been using the techniques, he's already gained five listings and 
last time I talked to him about a week and a half ago, one purchase of nice. a property, yeah. and that was in less than two months from implementing the marketing strategies. Yeah, talk a little bit about the uh, workshops that you and Hallie have been doing, because I know she's said all of her clients and stuff have just been raving about them, and they're like, when's the next one? We need to come back. <laughs> so, like, um, what, what are they... Once they've started and then they leave, what are they? What's kind of like the big takeaway, or what's what's their what's their big goal that you want them to leave with? Well, I want them to leave with not paying for leads and actually right. getting out and meeting people. So, of course, we start with the open house concepts, and I teach the psychology of sales. So, I really teach them how to get in the psychology of everybody that's walking in the door, how to bring their task tension down so that they actually open up to you. And guys, I have to tell you. Buyers and sellers are liars, especially when they come into open houses. They have literally are sitting in their car deciding what they are going to what tell are we you tell her? <laughs> to get you off their track. And I've even had, li like, I've been at a listing appointment with one of my agents, and the clients actually said to us, oh, my gosh, we had decided that we were going to tell him that we were just neighbors driving by and that we wanted to see the home. And he was so nice, and he just let us look at the home and was just very professional and by the time we finished looking at the home, we decided we wanted him to come over and give us an evaluation on our home. And I was like, see, I told you, <laughs> they lie. We call it the popcorn, okay? It's the kernels that they're cooking up in the car. And then in, in, as soon as they walk in and their task tension drops and they start to really open up to you, they're going to look at you and they're going to be like, okay, we need to tell you the truth. Sure, what? <laughs> and they're like, we don't really have an agent. Really? That's okay. Everybody tells me they have an agent. Whatever it is, when they pop their own popcorn, just give them a pass. Yep. It's okay because everybody does it, right? So that I think that's the biggest thing is that you don't have to believe everything that they tell you. And when they walk in and they're like, I have an agent, just go ahead and continue with the steps. Yep. Don't stop. Yeah, yeah. Because nine times out of ten – it's not the truth. Right. And there's a national statistic out there that over 65% of people that walk into open houses are actually unrepresented. That's huge. Right. Otherwise, they'd be going around with showings of their agent, right? Right. Yeah. And then us being in Arizona, let me tell you, if you're at an open house in July and it's 115 outside and somebody gets out of their car and walks into an open house, that's a serious they're fire. really serious. <laughs> yeah, that's they're a serious. serious fire, right? Okay. <laughs> they're not just out looking for decor. Oh, let's just go pop around while it's really nice out right now and just sweat my ass off while I'm looking at all these houses. It sounds, sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. What a weekend. What? <laughs> so, and I tell my agents, okay, I know our busy season is typically January through April. It's when you're going to have a lot of people coming in. I love the June through September because number one, it's that's, so hot. That's a committed buyer. That's for sure. They're committed. Yep. But number two, you have time to spend with them while they're drinking the cold water that you've given them. <laughs> 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 you should hang out inside here for a little while. Yeah, you should yeah. just hang out. You want another bottle? Let yep. me get you another bottle. <laughs> I love it. I love that too. So, no, but I think the biggest thing is learning how to truly be closers with these classes. And the classes we're doing, Holly and Elizabeth are the first group that has ever said, Tina, can we take your two day workshop and can we break it up into a series? I have loved the series that I'm doing with them. Yeah. It's not as wearing on me. When I do a two-day workshop, I have to rest for like three days afterwards because that, I yes. give so much energy to it that my whole body hurts when I'm done. Yeah. These, this series has been awesome because not only do they come in every Tuesday and Thursday for a month, but then also in between, they're implementing what they learned and then coming back and asking questions. Yep. And I think that's a super cool way to do it. I think I'll do more of that. Yeah, I know that she said that every one of the that has attended your class has just loved that they could come back and kind of reinvigorate themselves and continue to improve yes. their processes and stuff. And so when we we have a huge success story from from the, this group that we just worked with. Uh oh, what happened? Tell okay, me. So there is a mother daughter team who was doing an open house. They did not settle for compliance. They went for commitment. They now got two listings from this pair of friends as well as they're buying two homes, as well as one of the buyers for the listing is unrepresented. Dang. So five yeah. transactions from Just that. Working it well, yeah. Yes, yep. because they're actually listening and taking it all in and moving forward. Wow. And I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. So exciting. <laughs> yes. Uh, what's kind of on the horizon? What's the next five years for Tina? 
That is interesting. So I'm not totally sure because I'm always changing. Yep. So my newest thing that I am loving, like I said, is these online slash group group coaching courses that yep. I've created. So I created New Agent Accelerate, Creating Disruptors in Real Estate, which is based on this book. That is going amazing. Again, those agents are they're on their third week. They're all out doing their open houses. They're all coming to the group coaching sessions. They're from different parts of the country. So they're also building referral yep. relationships with Love each that. other. Yep. So we've got Florida, Tennessee, and Arizona so far in this group. Okay. That's a continuing class, though, that will always run. Yep. And they are just loving it. They are thriving. And then I put together this group um, community for them to chat with each other. And all day long, every day, they're all just chatting. Hey, what do you think of my new open house signs? Guess what, everybody? I got my first open house this weekend. And they're all cheering each other on. That's awesome. Which is so cool. Yep. What a cool community. Um, I will be doing more of the It's Time to Write Your Book group coaching courses because people keep asking, did I miss it? Can I do the next one? I do limit those, though. Yeah. You know? Um, and now... I, in the next two weeks, I believe I will have it done and ready, is how to build a successful real estate team. So that one is everything that somebody needs to build a team, every template that they need. So it's got their team agreement, standard operating procedures, value proposition. Everything is created for them. They just need to plug and play. Hmm. So. Got a lot in the works. I get bored really easy. <laughs> You stay busy, I'm sure. <laughs> I get bored easy. <laughs> I always have this amount of energy too. Yeah. So like you do. I, I'm I, sitting at home and I'm like, do, 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 do. what am I gonna do next? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Um, it's been awesome getting to know you and uh, just kind of picking your brain a little bit. Thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, for anybody that wants to get a hold of you, buy the book, where can they reach you? Well, the best thing to do is you can actually email me at tina at tinavaliant.com. You can also go to my website, tinavaliant.com. But where I always post all of my classes, no matter where I am, because I'll be in Florida in June teaching as well, um, I think with Hallie and Elizabeth, we're also planning something for May, the month of May, yep. and then probably the month of July here in Arizona. So if you want to know more about how to find those classes, where they are, find me on Facebook. All right, it's just look up Tina Valiant, you'll see me. And I post my classes that I'm doing regularly on there. Yep. And that's probably the best way. Awesome. Yeah. You guys heard it here first, Tina Valiant. Go check out her website, check out her Facebook. Um, awesome resource, just an amazing real estate coach, author, and just a great person. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, Tina. Thank you so much. Thanks for sticking around for another episode of Break It Down with Braden, and stick around, more to come. Thanks. Thanks.